So what things have you learned from like running this business, right? You talked about being very lean. You talked about wasting your time. Like if you had four <laughs> bullet points of like your best lessons that you've learned from being an entrepreneur, especially in financial services as a woman, what would those four kind of pain points be? Four in particular? Three, let's do three. Okay, um, the lessons. Mm. Oh, here's the biggest one. Don't assume that you know what the problem is. What happens a lot of the time when you think of a solution, you've already made an assumption about what problem you're solving. I didn't fully understand the problem I was solving. I thought I knew what it was. <clears throat> and it was, it was kind of presumptuous of me, I think, when I first started out with it. Because I was building what I thought people wanted. Yeah. That doesn't solve a problem, though. And what, what did you think people wanted? To be cool, to be on voice, to be on Alexa. Mm -hmm. But it's much deeper than that. There's a whole emotional thing going Is on. disruption ever about being cool, though? Like, you know what I mean? I think that's the quickest way to failure in oh, some see, aspects, <laughs> right? If you're trying to do it yeah. to be cool. It has to be to um, make a person's experience better. Like, what, what were the things that you found out from just that, that switch? Like, it's not about being cool. It's about this. What is this? Mm. What did you learn? Well... I should, I should explain that a little better. I thought that the emotional reason people would want this was deep down, it makes you cool. Like, why do I like BMW? Why do I wear this brand or that? Yeah. There's a coolness factor, right? Like Apple, why do you pay so much for an iPhone? It does the same thing as an Android, basically. Yeah. Because it's a symbol of desire, sexual appeal. There's a luxury, a scarcity, an exclusivity to it. So all of that was going into the kind of branding and the idea of what I wanted to build, thought it would be. Mm -hmm. But really, one of the biggest benefits, different from features, that was, oh, this is another lesson. Features and benefits. Yeah. Like the core of- Talk about it. This That's everything, <laughs> everything, man. I'm so good at talking about features. I can rattle off stats about voice mm -hmm. or anything like numeric. I'm pretty, I'm pretty well versed in why is voice important? What's the deal? Who's using it? But when it comes to the benefits, that's what sells. That's what hits somebody in the heart, not the brain. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that at the beginning. I didn't get it right. That's awesome. Can you explain features and benefits again? Features and benefits. I think that's so, so important. This is product marketing 101. And it's actually still like really difficult for a lot of people who are building products to discern mm -hmm. the differences. So features would be like, you can send 10 broadcasts a month. Another feature might be it works on desktop and mobile. Another feature might be you can do either a voice recording or text to speech. Mm -hmm. um, but a benefit would be get your day back. Yeah. Reach everyone in one fell swoop in five minutes. Another benefit might be connect on a deeper level with people and build trust and grow share of wallet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still kind of cracking that nut on translating the features into the benefits. And the only way to understand those benefits is to ask the people who are using it, why is this good? Yeah. Why no, is absolutely. it bad? I think surveying is important. Yeah. Right. And I, I know that's something that we do internally. We do um, with our client base because we want to hear from them to be able to provide those benefits to them. Right. 